kind of um, an interesting like theater origin story and puppetry. You know, like most kids, I'd love puppets and thought they were really cool and love Sesame Street, but never really thought about like, that's a job somebody has. And then when I was in high school, I was on like the engineering STEM track to go get an, a degree in electrical engineering. And I had to take my courses in a funny way because we were a rural school. So like I had to go to different schools to get different courses done. And as like, long story short, it meant that I was short like six credits to graduate when I was in grade 12 of option courses. And so the high school drama teacher was like, if you come build sets and paint things for us and build our stuff, we'll give you drama credits. And I was like, oh, that sounds fantastic. And I started building props and started learning about puppets. And I uh, never went to engineering school and went to theater school instead. What I'm learning is that puppetry is engineering. All these things that I spent all these years learning in school that I thought I'd never get to use again, all of a sudden I'm sitting here figuring out like, the inverse proportional weight of a washer if I put it at the end of a stick and how much weight I'm going to need to move that. And it's like, oh, all these things kind of come full circle if you look at uh, how a puppet's built, right? It's, uh, it's all math. I don't have a lot of experience in performance. I've done manipulation while I'm prototyping, but I would say like performance, this would definitely be the first time that I'm doing all my own manipulation, all my own operation on a puppet show. The type of puppetry that I'm interested in is largely mechanical puppetry, stuff that relies heavily on engineering and heavily on like creation and tinkering. And I feel like that to me enables me as a person to be able to perform because it allows me to speak directly through the puppets. It's not like mask or something where it's your movement necessarily my movement's there, but it's really the puppet itself or like the background kind of telling the story. And I feel comfortable doing that. And I feel like for me, that level of separation allows me to give it a lot more uh, sincerity and a lot more truth than if I was just trying to perform on my own. I'd be too like self-conscious, but I'm not self-conscious when I'm like shaking a, a washer on a string. <laughs> you don't care because the puppet's doing something so cool that you forget about your own corporal reality and you just kind of dig into its reality. I've always been um, interested in the idea of inanimate objects or objects that aren't human, but the emotions that they would feel if they were. So like a cloud, how it would feel being like, you know, created in a valley, being pushed over the top of a mountain, like being pushed over the prairies and eventually like dying on the prairies, you know, with um, no control over its situation. When audience members watch my work, uh, specifically this work, I'd like them to get like the uh, artistic equivalent of like eating cotton candy, you know, it's just something that uh, it's, it has no necessary nutritional value, but it's something that just brings a little bit of joy and happiness to your day and maybe some thought about looking at the things that are around us every day and seeing them as more than just what they appear to be. Being able to see them in the same light that we see humans, you know, that we see how they respond to their environment and what they mean to us as more than just like a cloud or like a sidewalk. They're real things and they're, um, we can impart our emotions on, onto those things just as much as we can onto other people.